Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I know what you're already writing in the comments on your mechanical keyboards. I can hear them from here. They're clicking and clacking away. This is a copy of the Leon Lee 011 series. Well, put it this way. Leon Lee didn't invent the fish tank and they sure as heck didn't invent a glass box. What we're doing today is taking a look at the Magnum Gear Neo Cube 2 Infinity Mirror. Claire wrecked the gag. You had your turn to speak without further ado. Do it again. Let's take a look at the Neo Cube 2. Do it again. All right, let's start off with panel removal. There's two thumb screws on the rear, much like the original O11. Basically unscrew the two thumb screws, pop off the top panel, and away you go, Bob's your uncle. Side panel, exactly like the original O11 as well. Just slide it up from the bottom. Not gonna be removing the front glass panel, although it is the same, you just lift it up, but I'm not doing it because I don't wanna get any fingerprints on that infinity mirror. To remove the rear panel, you need to remove this top panel as well. Another single captive thumb screw, slide that back, and then we just push that up from the bottom and the back panel comes off. The last bit of panel to remove is this raceway at the back. It's got two screws. And wiggle it a little bit, just a little bit to get it out. For power supply support, you're looking at a maximum length of around 275 millimeters. There's lots of room here to make the power supply fit. But just remember, you will need to take this clearance into account too, where you've got other cables running up this cable raceway. Cable management is handled by this cable channel at the back here. There's four Velcro straps that tie everything down, as well as a couple other cable tie downs on the back of the motherboard tray. There's two here, there's a couple around here, and there's also these rubber grommets where you can jam all your cables through. There's also some pass-throughs along here, so you can jam all of your stuff through as well. Storage options are handled a little bit differently here. So you've got these two 3.5 inch sleds here. Well, they're not really sleds, but they're basically brackets that allow you to mount two spinning rush drives. And then you can mount another three 2.5 inch drives, which means you can have five drives on this single bracket in total. That'd make one heck of a heavy bracket. For motherboard support, we can do ITX up to ATX boards. So as you can see here, this is the board we'll probably be using for the build. Not sure yet, haven't decided at this point of filming, but yeah, that's basically all you need to know about motherboard support. However, this isn't the whole story with motherboard support because on the back of the Neo Cube 2, you can actually mount another, which means you can do a dual system setup in this. So if you're doing streaming or you wanna do some type of encoding or basically a second gaming PC, if that's something you really wanted to do, you could actually do that. Now you will need one of those Fantex power supplies, the one like the Revolt X that allow you to power two systems off one power supply. You've got these slot covers here if you want to install an expansion card. However, remember this is a low profile bracket, so you won't be able to use full height cards in the back here. In terms of air cooler height support, you're looking at about 148 millimeters. As you can see on the back of the case here, there's no 120 mil fan mount, which actually will give you an indication of the kind of clearance you can get here because this isn't even the full width of a 120 mil fan. Full fan and radiator support at the bottom of the case, we've got up to a 360 millimeter radiator or three 120 mil fans, as well as you can go up to two 140 mil fans at the bottom as well. At the top of the case, we can do up to a 360 mil right up there, three 120 mil fans. We can do also a 280 mil radiator if that's something you wanted to do as well, or two 140 mil fans up there as well. On the side for radiator support, you're also looking up to a 360 mil rad at the back, as well as three 120 mil fans maxes, 50 mils of clearance between the back side of this and the side panel, which means you can actually put a radiator on the other side if you like, and the fans on this side or vice versa. GPU support, you're looking up to 410 mil of clearance. This is the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 Gundam Edition. And this is a card we typically use for these type of tests. And you can see there's plenty of room because there's no cross bracing on the back slots. You can put any vertical GPU bracket in and you can mount your GPU vertically as well with no issues whatsoever. Depending on the height that you put your bracket in as well, 
you should be able to put fans underneath the GPU as well. There's a single removable dust filter on the bottom of the case. Just slide that out and you can see that this is nothing too special. It's just a dust filter, guys. Sorry, sorry to disappoint. And then we've got our USB 3.2 front panel connector. We've got front panel audio. We've got SATA power for the built-in RGB controller because this does have built-in RGB for that infinite mirror front, if that's the SKU you choose, as well as a USB Type-C front panel cable. Because this has a built-in RGB controller, you've got expansion, so you can actually use two different types of RGB. You can use this connector here, which we typically find on Fantex things, as well as three pin five volt addressable RGB. As well as that, there is motherboard pass-through, so you can plug this into your board and let your motherboard control everything. And there's all the standard cables for all your lights and switches to let you know your system's online. However, these do have labels recommending which cables to use if you're going for a dual system setup. For the front panel IO, we've got a power button, a reset button, which actually doubles as a hard disk activity light for the second system and a power button, as well as the RGB control here, a combined headphone and microphone jack, a single USB type C port and two USB type A ports. Hello friends, this is an infinity mirror, similar to what we see on the Fantex coolers, and basically it's for aesthetic purposes only. And this is another thing that makes this different from the O11 as well. It is slightly transparent, so you will be able to see your system through this panel if you're looking closely, but I like aesthetic things like this, and I've said this as well with the Fantex mirror stuff in the past, that it does look very, very cool, however, we don't know yet, we haven't built with the system. Lastly, there's a box full of accessories, pretty standard stuff here, guys. Screws, cable ties, everything you need to build a new system. That's basically everything you need to know about the Magnium Gear Neo Cube 2 Infinity Mirror Edition. So let's get building. And as a bit of a bonus, because everyone always asks me to do this when I wear this t-shirt, this is what's in the pocket, guys. It's something that I would do in person. Look, see? Look, that's it. That's all it is.
All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the view. The view, yes, the view <laughs> into the glass box. Well, it is a bit of a view, let's be honest, of the build and the building of the computer with the screwdriver, because now we're gonna take a look at the thermals. What you're seeing on screen right now is the thermals are pretty darn excellent. Better than I expected. Now, I know there's gonna be some debate in the comment section about whether or not you should put the fans intake or exhaust on that side fan spot. But the best way with these cases is always to set it as intake unless you are putting a radiator there. If there's no rad there, intake. If there is, exhaust. All right, so the thermals are good, but what about the hardware that we use in this build? The CPU is the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. We put that on the ASUS ROG Strix B550A Gaming. To cool the 5950X, we use the Fantex Glacier 1 360 MPH. The GPU is the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 Gundam Edition. All of the fans are the brand new Leon Lee SL120 Infinity Unifans. And if I missed any of the other parts, I'll put a PC part pick list down below in the description. Check that out, have a peruse, look at all the parts, see how much it all costs because I don't know. Okay. How about this new case from Magnum Gear, formerly known as Metallic Gear? Well, it is kind of similar to the O11. However, it does a couple things in its own way. First of all, the most obvious thing is that infinity mirror on this version of the case, which actually looks pretty darn fantastic. I'm actually surprised that Lee and Lee didn't think to do this before Fantex did because this is essentially a Fantex case. Not only that, something that I don't think Lian Lee has thought of either is having the ITX motherboard on the backside. Now, this case is probably exactly the same size as the O11 Dynamic or the O11 Evo, yet I can do a dual PC build in it. This is more simply designed. The build quality is basically exactly the same as the Lian Lee case and I would go as far as saying that I would probably pick this over the Leon Lee case any day of the week for one reason alone. And that is again, because you can mount an ITX motherboard to the inside back of the motherboard tray. That to me personally is a feature that we should see more in cases just to give us options with that type of stuff. Now, there are some caveats to that, of course, right? The first being that you'll need a cooler that fits between it. Now I'm gonna go and say that it's gonna be about 65 mil of clearance. I don't remember what the official number is, but that's what I would do to play it safe. As well as you'll need a low profile card if you're wanting to use any type of adding cards. They're not that hard to come by, but you don't really find high power GPUs. The only low profile GPU that I've got is the Radeon Pro 6400, which yeah we loved it so much we didn't even make a video about it. <laughs> Going back to the build quality, the case is put together really, really well. It feels like a more premium case than it actually is, which is a nice surprise considering this is also cheaper than buying yourself an O11 with a very similar feature set. One other thing I didn't mention about the Neo Cube 2 is the whole case can be inverted. So if you wanted to flip it over and have it on the other side of your desk, you can actually do that. Now, I don't show that in all of the videos that have invertible cases because I usually talk about the way that we build things in the video, but I did think it was worth mentioning because we have another one of these, which is a black one, which will probably do an inverted build in at a later stage. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned to see that. The cable management in this is pretty good. I mean, you would have seen that part of the video. I didn't really care about making it look good because the reality is you can't see it. And when you put that cable bar back on, basically hides everything anyway. So the cable management is decent enough. I think you'll probably run into problems if you're looking at installing spinning rush drives or 2.5 inch SSD. So that would be something that I'm sure another channel will explore, but because we don't typically use those type of drives for our builds and our reviews, we didn't explore that at all. In terms of pricing, there's four SKUs in total. There's this one, which is the Infinity Mirror in white, which is the most expensive of the stack. Then we've got the black Infinity Mirror and the black and white without. For the white Infinity Mirror in US dollars, you're looking at 169 US dollars or around $199 at the time of filming this video. And I gotta say, we didn't get stiffed on Australian pricing for once, which is kind of nice. Yeah, 
Let us know what you think about the Neo Cube 2. I really, really like it. It's a little bit different to the Leon Lee cases. The fact that you can invert it is also nice, much like the Leon Lee cases, but overall, I think it's gonna be cheaper to get your hands on one of these. These might be harder to get, that's the only thing. The other, the other thing it's missing as well is rear exhaust or intake, but like the original O11 Dynamic, which didn't have that, yeah, this is a bit more similar to that. So it is, and it isn't exactly what you think it is. And yeah, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available by clicking that join button down below. And if you like this video, do yourself a big old favor, hit the like button, you know you want to. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll win absolutely nothing, except if you ring that notification bell. Well, you'll also win absolutely nothing except seeing my beautiful face pop up in your notifications on your mobile device or your desktop anytime we put out a new video. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy. Yes, I belong to you. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek and the coffee's finally kicked in. And I'm gonna do this one more time. Claire, you ready? Every time I wear the shirt, people are always like, I can guess what's in the pocket with the cat. And that's what's in the pocket with the cat. And that's what's in the pocket if we get a real cat. Whoa. Hello, Benny. Straight, like it, Benny? straight to the PC. Nope.